throughout yeah. how you had, you know, time. If you want to put on a Pandora and have a cocktail and talk to your friends about it. Well, I will say in working with these girls, I had to give them at least two hours, or else they would have gotten mad at me. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. I have a question. Um, I want to know how, how was it like competing, um, comp and competing in RuPaul's Drag Race? Like, was um, you nervous? Oh no, it was fun. You know, you I got I got the opportunity of a lifetime to be on TV and act a fool on there and get paid for it. So mm -hmm. I was it was amazing. It, if I could do it again, I would do it all over again, and I wouldn't change it for the thing. So um, I think the best part of doing the show though is you don't realize how many people watch the show and like how many people you can actually touch and inspire. And I, I think that's the greatest gift that was given to me from the show. So is it is it like a real competition or is it planned? Um, it's all rigged. It's all fake. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, the, the stuff that we create and stuff that, that's all real. Like the competition, everything is real. Do I think that there's um, um how do I put this? Favorites? Yeah. Do I think there's some favorites from producers and stuff? Absolutely. But I mean, at the end of the day, it is what it is. It's a TV show and it's just made for pure entertainment. What was it like being in your first performance? My I mean, in general. I mean, in drag period? Yes. Oh, you will go. Well, the first time I did it, I, I didn't know how to sew, so I took out a piece of fabric and I, <laughs> I uh, safety pinned up the side of it and like turned it inside out and I had like a real cute seam. And uh, <laughs> <laughs> I've totally done that. <laughs> Sometimes you're on a pinch and you're not on a machine. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I didn't know how to cover my eyebrows, so I used to get like the cream shadow, and I used to cake that shit on, and, like thinking it looked flat. And my first song I ever did was Britney Spears' uh, "Breathe on Me" into um, Missy Elliott's "I'm Really Really Hot." I played sports then, so I was like all and like truck driver walking it was it was horrible, and I don't know how I won, but I won. <laughs> so. so whatever. Titania, same question actually. What, what was Gosh, your? I was thinking about that, and I don't even know if I can remember the first time I. Performed. I remember the first time I did it um, uh, as a, a fledgling homosexual youth. I loved the movie <laughs> Hedwig and the Angry Inch. So for Halloween in college, uh, one of my exes had done Hedwig in Kansas City, and he was showing me all the makeup, and so I put it all on and thought I looked amazing. And then years later, once I had been doing drag for a while, I found a picture of myself in that night and was like, oh, you look so busted. <laughs> so I keep it in my makeup case so that every time I'll flip it open, I see that. Do you have your makeup case with you? No, no, it's at home. I have a picture. Now, Boo -Boo, why, don't you, why don't you answer the same question? Well, I don't know if you can tell, but I, I love, you know, um, being a club kid, that whole aesthetic. And I love Michael Alec and all the club kids from the 90s. So I actually had that look where you put rhinestones all over your face, and I would like chisel my face with rhinestones and totally. honey. Yeah, that's too. Cool. <laughs> but you know, after a while, like, the stones kind of fall off. You get so sweaty. So, but, like some nights, like by the end of the night, I'm just like, I'm not. You're left I'm with like three here and one here, and you're like, it's totally what I'm at. But I, was, I had fun, you know. Like, I I know I do this for fun. And I'm still having fun. I enjoy what I do. I love to live for it. Hey! <laughs> Time to go on. Anyone else have any more questions? Yeah. Um, so I, I assume by drag you travel around like the world and around the US and stuff. How, how different is drag culture by city? Um, for, the biggest difference for me is when I went to Europe, that was the drag there is completely, completely different. And, and I love it though because. Um, I feel like, I, I know a lot of people in, in the U.S. have a lot of passion for the art, but being in Europe, it's just like, they have their own unique individual style, and you can see how much they love what they do over there, and that was refreshing, because I guess, because I travel so much and meet so many people that I feel like they take it as a job and, and, and don't appreciate, you know, this character, this persona that you're given, or this, like, spotlight or voice that you have, and, and um, yeah, I, I guess... That's my answer. <laughs> um, also, for everyone, how, how much of being a New Yorker influences the way that you drag? I'll hit that one. Uh, I mean, I am from originally from Missouri, but I've always had uh, felt a kinship to New York and, and ran here as soon as I could. And a lot of what I do, as Leo was saying, I started out in the club fit scene too, so I, I worked a lot with broken mirrors and I. I once made a head-to-toe bodysuit out of broken mirrors. 
Uh, and it's shit like that that you go, well, you know, I, my day job, I'm a bartender, night job, I guess, and I think I could go do that anywhere, but does my drag style mesh in other parts of the world? Like, can I go to Hawaii and just show up and <laughs> whack-a-doodle <laughs> stuff that seems so New York-centric, you know, that I feel like the city is so diverse and, and encourages people to express themselves in whatever way they, they feel like. Um, whether it be a Glamazon beauty or a club kid situation or some kind of monster of a sort, they just go, hey, do whatever you want. Rock it out. As long as you think it's cool and it makes you happy, it works. Yeah, for me, I, I moved to New York um, to pursue performing. I went to school for musical theater. And, um, you know, New York is the start of every trend. You know, everything that starts here is fresh. And it takes a minute to, you know, reach out to around the, people around the world. So, like, you know, I could be wearing white shoes today in New York, and a year later, I'm like, oh, I'm done with white shoes. Everyone's on white shoes, you know? <laughs> We're trendsetters in New York. What are you saying? <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> so, so wait, excuse me, wait, wait. So tell us when was, like, the time you actually, like, stole those boots out of Jerry Hollowell's closet? Because, like... Oh, no. <laughs> I got them at Patricia Field. Oh, they're but, um, No, they're awesome. Yeah, no, I love the fashion in New York, and, um... It's just really inspiring because there's so much art in New York. I feel like the rest of America is not really there yet. New York is there. We are here. I'll say that uh, about, because growing up in Texas, it was all about pageants and, and the big hair and the, and the gowns and this, that, and the other. And um, um, I stayed in Chicago for a little bit when I did the show and then I moved here. And here is kind of liberating because you are able to be who you want to be. And you get to experiment in all types of styles of the art. And I think it's the best, it's the best city I've ever lived. Yeah, and even just being in a room of like different queens in New York, you could see so many different styles per queen. Whereas in another state, it's just gonna kind of be like it's a, this is here. Yeah, yeah. Uh, this, this gentleman right here, sorry, he has a question. He's very eager to ask it. How long have you been doing this for? I'm sorry, here. Right. <laughs> uh, uh, I sixteen years. I've been in New York since January. That's when I started. Uh, I guess I started maybe three or four years ago. Yeah. Um, I'm 27 now. I started when I was 18, um, kind of as like a dare. Someone said I couldn't do it. <laughs> and I hate when someone says I can't do it. <laughs> so, um, but then I met a guy, and I stopped because he didn't want me doing it. And I thought that was the stupidest, dumbest yeah. decision ever, because you should never let anybody tell you what you can and cannot do. And um, I started back up when I was 21, so I've been doing it for six years straight now. Cool. I started doing it in 09. I was 19. <laughs> I was like 14. <laughs> was that when you 14? Yeah, I was on a mess though at 14. Don't get it. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like you have to take it there though. You have to like experiment, find out where you can take it, where you can, what you like, what you don't like. Uh, there was something that uh, another one of the girls who did this exhibit with us, Azrea, uh, when I was watching her interview online, uh, there was something that really struck me that I Facebooked it that she said, uh, what did she say? If when you can be anything you want to be and anyone you want to be, it's surprising what comes out. Yeah. And I love that yeah. because it's when you allow yourself the freedom to say, I'm going to express myself in whatever way I feel like, and I'm going to take whatever's inside of me and make it outside of me. And if anybody else doesn't like it, I'm sorry that you don't get it, but I do, and I'm really happy with it. It's sometimes it's surprising what happens. <laughs> and just to, and just, just to uh, also just extend on that comment, I mean, another thing that Azraya said in her interview is that all drag is art, and all art is beautiful, and what I love about all of these beautiful just pieces of walking art that I was fortunate enough to work with is that that's very true. And uh, it's also very inspiring, just not to me as an artist, but just as an individual, that you shouldn't be afraid to do anything that you want to do or be anyone that you want to be, mm -hmm. you know? And, and, I'm going to inspire like, everybody here like, to start the new guys. Well, mine was, mine was a dare at first. And um, I'm not, I'm not going to lie, I wasn't for the money at first. <laughs> <laughs> and um, I was making really good money. And then, but now it's completely, it's, it's changed. What inspires me is being on the show all the fans and, and being able to entertain them. To see, like when I perform and I see fans smiling and just cheering my name, which I never ever had before. It gives you a feeling inside that you just want to keep going and doing a little more. For me, um, it was when I put on my mom's wig when I was about 
I was in like the sixth grade. You know, I just, like you said, being a chameleon, changing your look, it empowered me. So um, I'm a really artistic person, so I just kept taking it there, taking it further and further and further. And um, it's all about the fantasy, being what you've always wanted to be, you know? That's awesome. I was always one of those kids who would love to build things with like connects and make like roller coasters and shit. And then at the same time, would, like be putting on my mom's heels. <laughs> And so they kind of clashed into one, and now I like to make stuff, but I just make it on myself, and I make myself kind of a walking one, which I think is really fun. I think you had a question? Um, oh yeah, will Yap, will Yap be performing today? I love how they all just look at me. Like, <laughs> no, no, and no, I mean, we... We're gonna sign up for that one. We're gonna walk out of the no, we're, yeah, we're, we're, we're just we're happy. We're just we're all going to be speaking today, but we're going to be like looking at the artwork and talking about it. I couldn't afford their fee. <laughs> These bitches are expensive. <laughs> as far as the fashion, glamazon on versus club kid. Yes. Well, I feel like club kid is way more abstract. You know, it's um, glamazon is more um, ready for the runway. Um, I feel like it can be fishy, whereas Club Kid is whatever you want it to be. It can be as weird as you want it to be, like not having. It can be like this. <laughs> this is the perfect example. Yeah. Club Kid, Club Kid, Lamazon. Do you agree? <laughs> no, I completely agree. I have to actually, I actually, I, I'd, I'd like to make a comment on that. I actually think that a lot of these girls in particular that are here right now, actually, like, they sort of embody a lot of different elements that do come from what you would define as a glamazon or what you would define as a club kid. It really, you know, a lot of these girls here are not only professional, they're versatile. You know, they, they, you know, they, know, they, they know their history and they know like how they would want to portray themselves for a specific performance. How did you know I'm versatile? <laughs> they're chameleons. <laughs> oh, okay, shoot. Yeah. I'm trying to throw you a compliment, but okay. <laughs> even though, like even though this this uh, exhibit is drag by definition, it's not necessary that we are saying I am this and only this because someday maybe we'll want to do something really freaking crazy, and then someday maybe we'll just want to be gorgeous. Mm -hmm. It really just depends, you know. How do you feel? Yeah, day? literally. Because I was thinking I was planning this last night, and I was like, what am I gonna wear today? And then I like woke up and was like, well, I mean, I guess. Country hooker seems right today, <laughs> as opposed to maybe yesterday out of something completely other. I think, actually, I think so that's what I like most before. about uh, Paul's drag by definition is that it shows all the different types of yeah. like it's you not confined to one style spectrum. of drag. And guys, we're just we're gonna do one more question and then we gotta wrap it up. What's the last question? I got one. <laughs> How do you do your boobs? That's just one thing. <laughs> Those right there look so real, sorry. You want to know what's funny? I can do boobs all night. I'm fat. No, okay. <laughs> um, it, it depends. Like, when I normally do it, I have, um, I, like, either really, like, this is padded bra, that's why. Um, but I usually, I take, um, I don't know how many of you do, but I take um, a pantyhose and I just stuff it with cotton and make, like, a... Like a ball, and then I just shove my fat up, just stick it in there. So. Chicken cutlass. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Duct tape helps too. Yeah. Thank you so much. Stay, stay yeah. for the show, and of course, we're gonna do like a Q and A portion, like with the show.